Good afternoon, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. Um, I wanted to make a video this morning on, or this afternoon, on the work that I've been doing with data science because I started studying data science um, as a way to potentially earn money. Um, and basically, I've been studying for a few months now, and it was a very long drawn out process because I had to get my Chromebook and then when I got my Chromebook I had to install Linux and they don't and then when I installed Linux or I turned Linux on really I had to install Python and I didn't really get any advice on how to do it. I just had to make it up as I went along. I had to learn along the way. And at some point I found out that I could use Jupyter notebooks on my computer so I had been writing code using Jupyter Notebooks and I was really happy about that because um, it's like the Jupyter Notebooks in um, Kaggle so basically um, and then somehow or other I must have been I was watching a tutorial and they were talking about Google Colab now Google Colab is actually a Jupyter Notebooks, but it's on Google. And the nice thing about Google Colab is you don't have to install anything. Because on my computer, I had to install Python and all of the modules. Um, and you don't have to do that on Google Colab. It's already installed for you online. So that's a nice thing about Google Colab. And another nice thing about Google Colab is that wherever you are, if you have access to a computer, you can go onto Google Colab and work. But on my Chromebook, when I was working from Python in Linux and my Jupyter Notebooks in Linux, well, I, I was only able to work on my Chrome Notebook. And then if I happened to be somewhere and I didn't have my Chrome Notebook with me, then um, I was stuck. So that's the nice thing about Google Colab is it's online and if you can get onto a computer and then you can type in Google Colab and if you've got your Google email account then you can use Google Colab. So what I did was I did this particular um, competition piece in Google Colab because previously I had been doing it on Kaggle. But what I would rather, personally, to be quite honest, what I would rather do is I would rather do my work on Google Colab and then copy and paste it into Kaggle. So you can see here's my Kaggle account. And this is the, um, this, this was, this was what I did this morning. It says Titanic Competition 7th Try. So that's the seventh time I've tried to improve my score. So I had 77.511%. And my top score, my top score was my fifth try, which was 77.751%. But what I wanted to discuss with you today was even though I could not get the score above my top score, this was a program that I had made myself and previously I had just been like using the work of other people but because this was a program that I had made myself it illustrates that I have developed a slight amount of competency in Python even though I don't really know what I'm doing that well that much I have to refer to the work of other people to do things so I just wanted to show this to you. I can show you on the leaderboard that I submitted it today and this was my eighth try and it was 77.272% and this was a very elaborate program that had lots and lots of bells and whistles in it and it actually had scored less it actually scored less than um, 
the one that I'm going to show you, the, I believe it was the 77, the seventh twice, 77.511%. So I wanted to show you that on um, Kaggle. And this is my, um, the program that I wrote in Google Colabs, and then I transferred it over to Kaggle so I could submit it. Even though my score didn't improve, I still think it's an okay program because it's like my own work and it's something that I did myself. And I also loaded this up onto GitHub. So I'm going to go through it on GitHub because Google Colab, it's so easy to make a mistake and it's so easy to change something that I just called up the Google Colab just to show it to you. But I'm going to X out of Google Colab because it's so particular. And we're going to use GitHub. So this is my account on GitHub. And I've already called it up. But we can go to, like you can go to, this is my profile. And you can go to Titanic Datasets. And um, this was the one that I did this morning. That it didn't give me my best score, but since it's my own work, I wanted to go through it with you. Uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to import all of our libraries. And I included a, a print function when we were importing them just so it will show what version of the function is in operation because I thought that that's a nice thing to know let you know that it's working properly and then we had to import some more libraries so you can see these more libraries that we had to import the next thing we have to do is we have to load the data set so I had actually put the data set on github so if you wanted to follow along with me, um, well, you know where the data set is, so you can load the data set on GitHub. And then, so also, we're printing out the data set so you can see the data set, see what the data set looks like. And this was Titanic data. And then you can also see the shape of Titanic data. It's 891 rows by 12 columns. And then you can describe Titanic data. So it will give you uh, information about that particular data set. You can also uh, group the data set on who survived. So on this particular data set of 891, uh, you had 549 expired and 342. Um, survived. The next thing that you want to do is you want to um, upload the test data and again I'm showing you the uh, URL code so you can upload the test data if you would like to do that and follow along with me and then we printed the test data out. So the next thing that you want to see is you want to see who all has survived. So you type in Titanic data survived value count and it gives you 549 people expired and 342 people survived. And you want to see, the next thing is you want to see what percentage of people who survived were women and it gives you a rate of about 74.20% women survived. And um, they want to find out what percentage of men survived. And it tells you 18.89% men survived. So it's the women survived more than the men. So the next thing we want to do is we want to prepare the data. And so this comes in line with machine language or machine learning. 
So why is your Titanic data survived? Your features are P-class sex, sibling, spouse, and part. And then it's X, the X, PD, get dummies, and then Titanic data feature. That's a, a formula that you have to type in. And X test equals PD, get dummies, test data, features. So I wanted to print Y so you can see what is in Y. So Y tells you whether they uh, survived or not. And then I wanted to print X. So X just gives you features of that data frame. So it's going to be P class, sib, spouse, parch, sex female, sex male. So I wanted to print X test, and so that just shows you features of X test. The next thing we have to do is we have to do another formula for the train test split function. And this is a standard formula that I've seen in lots of programs that I've been working on. And what I did was I set the test size up to 50%. But you can set it up to another percentage if you would like. If you want to set it up for 20%, you can. Generally, you set it up for anywhere from 20% to 50%. But I decided that I wanted the test size to be 50% because when I was writing this program or, or working on this program, I put in test figures and then 50% gave a higher accuracy rate than the 20, 30, or the 40 percent. So I just stuck with that. But you can have anywhere from 20 percent to 50 percent test rate. The next thing that we have to do is we have to build our models. And these are lots of algorithms in the sklearn um, library. And so Basically, a seven algorithms that we have, and um, so this is the formula for the seven algorithms. And um, after you put in the seven algorithms, then you use this specific algorithm to um, to test the data, and then every algorithm has a different way of working and the, what we want to see is we want to see the accuracy what is the accuracy of these algorithms and so down below it here right here it's printed the accuracy of the algorithms and SVM has a higher accuracy than the other algorithms so I decided to go with the SVM since it has a higher accuracy. And you can also um you can also do a box plot to find out uh how these uh, algorithms fit into the box plot, box plot. And that, since SVM just scored slightly better, that's what I wanted to go with. The next thing we did is we wanted to use the we wanted to go ahead and make the predictions and so we had to use the SVM prediction which is um to do with SVC so we fit that into the model to predict who's going to live and who's going to die and then the next thing we did after that is when we do our prediction, what we have to do is we have to create a data frame so we can submit it to Kaggle. And so this text here is creating the data frame. And then you get a little message saying that your submission was successfully saved. And then what, and then you have to upload your submission. So you have to turn your submission 
into a CSV file because um, Python works with CSV files. And then we printed out the submission so you could see that the submission was actually printed out and it's got 418 rows by two columns. And that is what um, Kaggle wanted. And so when I finished that, and that's a very simple formula, and I had to use, you know, just doing a lot of studies and looking at a lot of code from other people. So um, I had to, like, use code from other people to make this uh, algorithm. But it worked out a lot better. I had a higher score with this algorithm than I did with the other one that I wanted to do that was much more elaborate. So um, if you want to, if you want to enter the Kaggle competition, I mean, I got a 77.51% on this. So it's not a bad score. I'm going to have to learn a lot more about um, the algorithms and about coding to get my score up because a lot of people have their score at 100%. And I don't know how they did that. But I'll have to keep studying and keep looking for ways to increase my score. And if I do increase my score, I will be the first to let you know. Um, I hope you got something out of this um, video and feel free to use my files if you want to use my files so you can enter the Kaggle competition. And um, if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. And um, if you want to leave a donation for the work that I do, I have my email account down below where you can leave a donation to PayPal if you like. And I will look forward to communicating with you in the next video.